Hi everyone and welcome to Painter 2017. I'm Justin Boos and I'm here to demonstrate to you some really wonderful technology we have in this version of Painter. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you uh, gradients which we've all seen before and um, very quickly I'm going to uh, show you a little trick that I've observed and if you look at this gradient and then you look up around the room uh, that you're in uh, wherever you're at you'll find that most objects if not all have at least a subtle gradation of light and darkness to them there's always light falling on one area and off of one area and so uh, if, if again if you look around just about everything has that and when we're making concept art or uh, problem solving artwork or uh, designing a character people places most times, since we're, just, we're not trying to be expressive with our work um, more than we are trying to be logical or, again, have a conceptual mindset, um, we just want something that does uh, the fundamentals. And I think that's what's important. And these brushes really help with that. This, br this brush technology, excuse me, um, that I'm about to show you. And that brush technology uh, we're going to start out with is the glazing brushes. And the glazing brushes really help with this because they transition from one color to another. So whatever is my background to another, if I pick you know, a warm color, it's going to be a very nice transition from light to darkness. But especially when we're working in values, which most concept art starts out as, is a nice gradation of light and dark, or one color and the other etc. Um, but for this for this demonstration's purpose I'm really going to keep it with the uh, the lights and darks and I have a sketch here I'm going to go over and show you how that I'm going to paint it to um, to kind of execute this fundamental mindset so I can show you what I'm talking about and how these brushes can probably be useful for you in your problem solving with uh, either artwork or concepts or what I call whiteboarding, where you break down a, a new character and you figure it out, um, especially when you when trying to not just use the lines here that I have here, but also use values and light. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, and I'll show you that I made a uh, silhouette here, a dark gray silhouette under the sketch. I didn't make it completely black, and the reason is so I could still see my sketch under my line art. And that way I still have some form of a guideline here. And I can do gradations all over the place, wherever I, wherever I need it. Uh, I try to keep things simple. You know, you don't want things too complicated. And I'm going to point that out ahead of time. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you here in a, in a time-lapse format how that I execute this and uh, how, how that I find it useful. You can see visually. And then we'll come back and review it. All right, so you can see pretty clearly that I use some pretty subtle value changes just from light to dark. And this seems like something that you could typically do. It just seems like something um, kind of a common sense when painting that you should be able to do that. But sometimes, as some experienced people in painter know, um, that can be proven to be difficult. Um, and this, somebody will say, you know, this makes it look easy. Um, but go ahead and try a different brush. And you'll come back to this and you'll see that this brush actually helped me to make those simple and very subtle value changes that really added up and made something with a lot more depth um, in this image. And the second brush category I'm going to show you is going to be our next step in this tutorial, and that's going to be the stencil brushes. And the stencil brushes are kind of just like glazing brushes but they can be a little more hard and grainy so that when I'm working now that I have kind of some of that depth down especially if I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, piece of this concept idea to the next level level in production I'm going to go ahead and paint over my drawing now so I'm going to get rid of the lines 
and I'm going to use these brushes that have you know more texture um, to still have a little bit of an organic feel to this uh, while getting rid of the lines. Whereas if it didn't have texture and um, kind of that more organic look to it, I could end up with something that looks very digital. And uh, sometimes when you're making concept work, you don't want it to completely look ugly. You don't want it to. Uh, you want to be able to be intuitive with it, and um, you want it to look pretty in in uh, in the end. So these brushes are are very helpful with that, and I'll show you how that I use them to paint over now my gradations. Alright, so now that I have a painted concept, I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of a backdrop and use what we call texture brushes on the ground to show a little texture on the ground. And although we use textures and dab stencils, those are mostly paper textures, more of an organic texture. The dab stencil, I'm sorry, the texture brushes are actually more based towards conceptual textures, such as rocks, um, bricks, anything that you might need to help you lay a texture over a prop part of a location or a design and you'll see what I mean uh, in this last step here where I put some ground texture in a ground that I will build underneath him. So you can see about here that I'm just choosing a texture to use for the ground now that I've got just a little bit of a subtle value difference there that I'll be using and then painting over and adding the final touches to this painting. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around the internet. Thank mm -hmm. you.